Alright guys, welcome back to No Man's Sky with your host Koei Gaming and we are here with the LED display and if I toggle this little button right here you're going to end up seeing that display go from a 0 to a 1 and that number, even though it's a little on the slow side once you toggle again it's going to go from a 1 to a 2 and this is essentially what we're going to be building today over here on the wall over on this side we're going to be building an entire array just to help this system. And I'm just going to show you kind of how big this is. It's quite large and we're not going to need all the space, but it's exaggerated for a reason. So it's just so much easier for you to see. The first step we're going to be building is the binary counter, which is this section here. The next step that we're going to build is the sequencer, which is right up there. And then the last section we're going to build is the LED display. So this video is going to get kind of long because I want to have time to explain things to you and I want to have the ability to explain things in the right way. How this all got started was I was trying to design a binary counter and I started with this design right here which is essentially two AND gates powering into two different lights and they just kind of cycle back on themselves. So that way when something like this powers on you would get the light to flip, but unfortunately in order to make the light flip, you have to turn off manually the other side. I upgraded that by removing one set of the lights and making it a little bit more simpler by doing this sort of idea. And you flip the lights and the light will automatically flip itself, but you have to again manually turn the switch to make the light do what it's supposed to do. Once you get to over here, you're doing essentially a D-latch setup from electronics and one flip of the switch, which is a D-latch, would set the lights to flip the way they flip, as you can see right here. However, you can't really see it unless you know what you're looking for, but there is a feedback loop that actually starts to occur here, and it's right about that point right there. Right when point A goes to point B, there's a slight delay in the light that causes this to happen when a clock is attached to it. You'll notice, so if you look at binary, it, goes, it starts on the right with one, and then it should go to the left for two, the right should turn off, and then three should be both light turned on, okay? But it does it kind of in a weird backward direction. So it goes one, and then it goes three, and then it goes two. And so when I tried to hook that up into this setup, it messed up the thing. And so it went one, two, one, three, two, yada, yada, yada. And by the time I even tried to fix it with the fourth one, it just, it, the problem just magnified after that. And I tried to fix it in a number of different ways, number of different ways until... I asked on the Discord and I said, Cena, help me with this. And so Cena did this. He fixed it for me. So essentially, this is a Zor gate setup. And the difference here is the door gate essentially is this right here. This is your, your typical electronic S and R latch. S and R latch system, where an output down here is the Q and the output up here is the Q naught. The rest of this sets up the delay, so that way that when the button input comes in, it doesn't set up that weird little delay, and it, it essentially removes the feedback loop. So what we're going to do is we're going to build the first bit of the binary counter. So we'll see each single light that you see up here represents a single bit. Okay, and these things I'm going to explain what they're for much later in the video. The stuff down there I'm going to explain much later in the video. The first step right now is to build this. Okay, so I stole the button because I can only have 10 buttons in this game, but I'm going to need this button. I've got a second button all the way down at the end that still powers this thing, so I'm not too worried about it. As well as I have a clock up there that will power this thing, so I'm not worried about that either. So what we're going to do first is we're going to set up this array of, of auto switchers. We're going to go to tech. First off, you're going to push Z, right? You're going to open your D menu, you push Z, push tech, go to power industry, go to power. Make sure you set up one of these here. You put a solar panel and a battery and or a, a whatever else you want to use for power. Connect it to a battery, have some lines running to your wall. Okay, that's the first step. Make sure that happens. And you can find those under power. You just look up battery and then you look up solar panels, get them put down, put a wire between the two. Next up, go to switches. We're going to go to our auto switcher and we're going to put down three auto switches. Two down here on the bottom, one here on the top. And just notice the line from the one on the top is connecting down to the one on the bottom. So let's get this set up first. We're going to just put this right here. It's going to sit here and here. And then the one on top, it's just going to sit right up in the middle there. Right after those auto switches, you can see we have two more auto switches. And those two auto switches are essentially facing in opposite directions. You want to line it up as best you can with these two because there's going to be a line of wire that's going to connect all four of these together. So that way they link up really well. From there, you're going to connect your inverters. And if you look at the inverters over there and you picture them over here, they're going to be set up the same way. We want one inverter up here. We want a second inverter down here. 
The next two inverters are going to be facing towards each other. One lower and one upper. And then from there, that's your entire system of what you need to do. The next one up, we're going to explain the differences of what happens with the next one up. But first, let's get the wires to this system. So we're going to take some power. We're going to run some power to this particular auto switcher, run it from that one, connect it to the next auto switcher in line, and then connect it down to this inverter. The rest of them don't need to be powered. The upper wire here, we're going to run it again to the same auto switcher up here, and then we're going to run it all the way to this inverter. We're skipping out on the two auto switchers in the middle. We're also skipping on the two inverters in the end. I'll explain why that happens. The button, on the other hand, is going to get plugged into the wire here. I've already have a wire connection. If you don't believe me, there it is. All right, so the button connection, what's going to happen with the button, and we're going to look at how the button got set up. The button was get up there. So there's wires that connect to this auto switcher and this auto switcher. Both of them are getting powered by the button. You'll see why that becomes important in a little bit. We're going to go do our auto build mode. We're going to plug a wire from here to there. And then we're also going to plug a wire from there to there. So that way we have the two auto switchers connected. And we have our button connected to two. Next up, we're going to just put a wire between these four auto switches. We're going to connect this guy to this guy, this guy to this guy, and this guy to that guy. And last, we're going to connect our bottom portion of the auto switcher to the modifier of this auto switcher. And so we have a setup that looks like this. you got a T-shape there in the middle between these three auto switches and then a line that just connects all four of these to connect it up together. This output for these modifiers here, I'm going to explain where they're going to go later. For now, what we're going to do here is this is going to get connected. If we look at our model there, the output that's coming out of this auto switcher here it's going to be going down to the modifier of this input for this inverter. Then the output in the inverter is going down to the input of the next inverter. We're going to explain how this all plays out here, right? So we're going to go down first, go down to the modifier for both. It's going to go in both directions. So auto switchers to the modifier, then the output to the input. We're going to go output to input. We already have power coming in on the other side. And then here we're going to take the modifier and we're going to go to the opposite of the output there and the opposite of the output. So what we got essentially, this creates our nice door gate. And so as the single propagate, you'll eventually see the single propagate through this. Only one side will get lit up and I'll explain why that is in just a second. And it will power just one side of the system. And then when you turn it on again, because this system is powered in a certain way, it will flip the gate. So how do we get the gate to flip? We run a line from here from the modifier of this auto switcher, we run it over the top of all of the system, and then we plug it right into the output of this inverter. We're going to do the same on the bottom here. We're just going to run a line all the way over to the top and plug it in. So right now, the bottom is currently on. And so if I were to employ power with this button, power is going to go through the system, get a little bit of an interesting delay that gets a single to stabilize. And then from there, the single is going to go up and hit both of these auto switchers at the same time. Now, this auto switcher did not have power in the modifier, so this auto switcher will not turn on. Where this one does, and so the power will continue to propagate, once it heads into the inverter, it's going to flip this and turn this off. It's going to go into this. It's going to have this shut off, and because there's power here, this is now going to turn the line on, and that's going to turn that back on. Now, I'll show you what it looks like when it's turned on. Let's go ahead and hit the button, and you can see what happens. And there it goes, doing exactly as I was talking about. It flips the system as an SR latch because it latches it shut, so that way it does not propagate any further. So we're going to do this again and flip it back. And there we go. Okay, I put four sets of lights here, and I'm just demonstrating this is going to... Each one of these lights here are essentially representing a single bit. And so this is the single bit that represents the bit that goes on. And the top bit up there is representing the bit that goes off, okay? So... Essentially, they're diametrically opposite of each other, so to speak, if you want to call it that. So whenever this is on, this is going to be off, and it's going to be true as you go down the line there. And so what's happening here is this bottom set of bits is going to be counting upwards, where the top set of bits is going to be counting downwards. And that's what starts to be important here. And you won't notice the difference as you turn this on and off, but here as I turn this off, that's turning off, that one is turning on. And so right now, this is representing zero, and this is representing one. And as I flip between the two, you're still getting a zero and you're still getting a one flipping back and forth between the two. It does not do anything more than just flip back and forth. And that's all it's doing. What we need to do now is we need to set up, and that's where this power line is starting to go. We need to set up our second bit and then our third bit and our fourth bit. 
I'm going to point something out here. The third bit and the fourth bit I'm going to do off camera because those two bits are going to represent exactly the same as the second bit. This design right here is an asynchronous counter. And what I mean by asynchronous counter is when you see the counting, it goes extremely slow. It's not as fast as a synchronous counter. Dina had built both an asynchronous and a synchronous counter. He helped me fix this because what I was doing wrong was getting feedback in my system. That's why he was getting a, a much more much more convenient loop system here to prevent the feedback from occurring. And so I, I'm eternally grateful to Cena for doing that for me <laughs> because there else I'd be like fiddling with this for weeks before I finally figured that thing out and to sort of fix this, okay? So let's get our second system up. I'm gonna put down all of the pieces and then I'm gonna show you what's different. Okay guys, I'm back. So I put together the system. I basically rebuilt this entire thing with the exception of the button. We don't need the button anymore. And everything is identical here with the exception of this auto switcher, this other auto switcher, and this inverter. This is, these are the three things that are different. Here's, here's why. Okay, so we're going to be getting a single that propagates here. Once we turn this on, we're going to flip this from here. It's going to go there. And well, right now it's already on. So what we want to be able to do is have this system turned off. And so what we're going to have, if you look at this one here, we're going to have the auto, the, the inverter coming in from the top Q knot. It's going to be coming in from the Q knot. And that's going to be sending a power boost single over to the top of this one and also powering this one. And a single that's coming out also powering this one. And then that's going to go down here. Both the inverter and the the auto switcher here are essentially representing the button. Okay, so why is it representing the button you say? So this is going here, this is going there, there we go. So this, these two are now powered by this section here. This is going here, and this is going to get connected to there, and then this is going to get powered down here. And then instead of this getting powered by the main line there, we're actually getting, deriving our power Let me show you one more time. We're driving our power actually from the output of the previous one, which is going right into the auto switcher itself. And so in order to get that power to happen, um, I just find it easiest if I just delete that, run a line up here, just so that way I can get a power line there and then just kind of reconnect this line back together. That way we get our power line there. And so what's happening here is Currently, this bottom one is on. We're going to go ahead and turn it off so that way we can get the power to represent like how it should be represented on the other flip side. So we're flipping this power. There we go. This is all turned on. Everything is doing this thing. And there we go. We got ourselves set up. So this here is going to be used for the next system. I'm going to explain that in a few minutes. But first, we need to explain what's going on with the current system, okay? So we're going to hook up our lines to those lights that we see above. And I'm going to show you. First, I'm going to show you the line that's coming from the queue. We're just going to go ahead and just run some random lines. It's going to go over here. And this is going to connect to the first light. And then the queue that's coming out of here is going to come up this way. Just, these are just random lines. Don't do this. You don't need to follow me exactly as I'm doing this, okay? But I'm just showing you how this works, okay? When you hit this button... What happens is Q here is turning on, and that's going to turn on the light for one. However, because this light, this single right here now is turned off, this single cannot propagate over here to the auto switcher. At the same time, it cannot change this to an off single, and so nothing propagates through the remainder of the single, which is important because we want this to be a one, not a two, or a three, or a four, or whatever, right? So when we turn it on again, what's going to happen is this is now going to turn off, as you see there, and then the single is going to propagate and fiddle his way through until this guy turned on and now we got our two. Now if you remember what happened here, right? This is currently off, this is currently on. What's gonna happen here is when I push the button, it's gonna flip the system, but the system can't advance because this power is currently on. So until that turns off, we can't actually get anything in here either because watch what happens to this right in here. You can see the line turn itself off and that's gonna turn itself on and there's nothing, not enough time for power to get in here. And that's gonna cause it to be a three. And so this gives us a one, two and a three for a binary counter so far. In order to get four, five, six, and seven, we're gonna to need to hook up our next set of counters right here. So I connected Q, which is the bottom set of lights, and I connected Q not with the top set of that light. So Q represents the numbers that count upwards. Q not represents the numbers that count downward. So right now as it's set up, Q, which is the bottom one, the green light, those are representing zero. The top lights are representing the number three, because in binary that would be the number three. 
So as I cycle this here and I hit toggle, it flips the light to turn on this one to be a one. It turned on this one to now it's a two. So the top one went from three to two. The bottom one went from zero to one. And we're gonna do this again. We're gonna flip the lights. We're gonna flip it again. And so now this turned off, this guy turned on. As you can see, there's a bit of a delay in the counting, but eventually it flips itself and it gets there. And so now this is representing a two. The top one is representing a one. And then the last one here, once we toggle it one more time, this is gonna represent a three and that's gonna represent a zero. And when we toggle it again, it does a reset all, all on its own because it's only a two-bit counter, so it only goes zero, one, two, three, and then it recycles again, and it just does the numbers all over again. And so this is essentially how the binary counter worked. And so you're really only taking the one line Q, Q or Q naught, and you're using that one line to eventually build your LED display that you see here. So this line here that's going to the auto switcher, if we look at our demo model that's over here, you'll see that Q naught is connected right into the modifier here. But then you also see the line of power that's going all the way over and connecting to there for the next line. And each one of those is doing the exact same thing as we go forward. So let's go ahead and get our line set up real quick before we build the next one off camera. We're taking this line that goes right here, that goes up and over. We're going to take the line here and come on, there it goes. We're going to go right over and we're going to connect this to the edge of the auto switcher itself. And then this guy here is going to go right into the output of the inverter, going right into the modifier. So what's going to happen here is when this gets powered on, and I'll show you real quick what's going to happen. This guy is going to eventually make his way and it's going to power this line on once it gets there. We have to do it again because it's only on the first system. It's going to eventually power way on. There it goes. Here it comes. Much better. We got power. It's going to go and power this side here. And it's going to have just enough power, as you saw there, for this line to get power as well. And that's going to propagate the single to the next line that's going to be sitting over here. And that's what's going to get that particular light to light up right after it. And so the same is true if I powered this back on and did the same thing. Once I get to three, I'm going to eventually make my way to number four. And once I get to four, it's going to have just enough power to go through here. And it's still going to gain just enough power here to propagate the single going forward for the next two. And it's all going to shut off before these lights all get messed up in the process. So let's get building. Okay, we're back. We now have four binary digit counters. So this represents essentially what's on this wall here with these four lights. You got four binary counters. So what's that gonna count up to, if I remember my binary numbers correctly here, it should be counting up to about 15. Okay, and we don't want 15 for this because once we get to 15, we got we need we need once we get to 10, really, we need to have a separate number, right? So we have to have a way to cut this off at nine, and that's what these two guys are going to be for. We're going to come back to these two guys in a little while, but just save some room on your board here so that way you got room to have a way to shut off the single when we need it to shut off. We'll come back to that in a bit. So what's happening here, right? By the way, is this wall is representing something else? So we don't actually need this right here. At at least not unless we're going to expand out more but this is only just to remind me that i can mention that if you want to expand out additional digits beyond the four just go ahead and just keep expanding the system until you get all the way out there wow that was that was like blinding bright right there but yeah so you can expand out as far as you want to expand however it, it's unrealistic for example to make a 256 binary counter with 256 bits of binary counter that's ridiculous that would take up 256 squares of wall space you don't need that you only need four bits of binary counters that's actually enough to create a zero to nine counter and then you set up three of these counters but you have to do something with the others we got to come back to that another episode because of why i'm still trying to figure out how to make it go to another counter okay come back to that another day what we're going to do from here on the other hand is we're going to be taking the output of all four of these and we're going to remove this wall now because this is where we're going now we're going to start to make a sequen a sequencer which is what you see all the way down here at the end and first off in order for this to work on a counter the easiest way to look at this is to take the input what we're doing is we're taking the input and if i can go over far enough you'll notice that the modifier of each one of these it's going up and connecting each and every other modifier. At the same time, you also notice that the power of each one of these is going to connect to the power of each one as well. So to represent zero, we're just gonna take four auto switchers. We're just gonna put them in a line, much like this. And then that's gonna represent our zero. But we also have to make sure we run a power line 
to the edge of this. And so this needs to be powered. And then the lines here are just going to get connected to each one of these. And then the output here is going to be what's going to output to zero to our LED display. And that's where we're going to get to zero in this big funky thing here. We're going to come back to that in a few minutes. But first, we're going to set up all of the, these going all the way up to the top. And then that's going to include a shutoff. And I'll explain that when I get there. What we're going to do here, we're also going to borrow the floor. So we're going to take the output of Q. We're going to run it out to the floor. And we're just going to run it down the line. And Q, by the way, we need to make sure that we have this in the right location. So that is our first number. Our first number is actually going to go all the way over here. We're going to make some room for the others. So that way we got some room. And we're just going to plug it in here. And this is going to go down to the bottom of this guy. Next, we're going to take the next Q up. And we're going to take Q, which should represent the number, the second number in our digit formula here. We're going to run a line down here. And we're going to plug that right into this one. And then next, we're going to take our third number. We're going to do the same thing with our third number. We're just going to run the line down here, and we're going to plug that in. And then we're going to take our final fourth number, if I can get that to come out. Let's see if I can move. I'm going to move number three in, in a second here. Oh, geez. Wrong line. There we go. This is going to just come down. This is going to come over here, and it's going to plug in right there. There we go. That's, that's a lot better. Get three plugged back in. You know what? I'm going to take three down. That's what I didn't do. I didn't run it down like I should have. There. That's better. So now we can see each one of these lines a little bit more accurately, except for this one. This isn't going too far out. Let's see if we can get that a little bit closer so that way it's not so stretchy. There we go. Now we can see each one of our lines are represented by a single line there and nothing is being powered in there. And so that's all representing the number zero. And this is why there's no power there. The only reason it's not red like this is because it's not connected to the light bulb. If it was connected to the light bulb, you would actually see the number zero coming out of this. Okay, so from here, we're gonna start to build up the next, the next version. So in order to represent a one, we're gonna put a one here and then everything else is still zero for everything else. Right, and so this gets very easy to figure out once you know the binary. All you're doing is the binary equivalent of this. To represent a two, this is going to be a two. To represent a three, this is going to be a three. I don't know if I can squeeze this guy in there. I think I can. This is going to represent a three. To represent a four, that's when we're gonna go over here and the rest are gonna be blank. To represent a five, we're gonna have, we're gonna have this guy here and we're gonna have a one over here. To represent a six, it's going to be this guy and a one right here. To represent a seven, it's going to be all three of these lit up. Okay, you can start to see what's happening. Everything else, all the spaces in between are getting filled up by um, inverters. I'll put the inverters in in a second. To represent an eight, this is where we get the number that's coming over here. The rest of these will be blank. To represent a nine, we're still keeping this number and we're keeping a one. And then where we got the issue is when we were trying to represent 10. Okay, so we do need to put the 10 in here because the 10 is going to be represented by this number here. And then we also need to have one more, which is going to be represented by the number 11. And I'm going to explain why that's important, okay? So let me get go ahead and get the inverters in here and I'll be right back. All right, guys, I got all the inverters in here. So I powered up the entire line all the way to the top. All I'm doing to connect each and every one of these, I'm going to show you real quick. Each one of these are going to be connected horizontally this way, just like this, all the way to the end. And then at the same time, each one of these is going to be connected vertically. You're taking it from the bottom. You're just going to run a connection from the bottom to each one of these. And as you go to the next line, you just take the next connection. You run it to the next line just like that. And just take each one, run one, one, run one from the other until each one of these is connected. This is going to take me a little time to do. I'm going to do this all off camera because it's just easier to see me do this all off camera than to watch me connect each one of these connected up together. But once you get this, so what's happening What what while I connect things here, let me explain what this is doing. The sequencer here is going to be decoding binary and converting that into a number that we can recognize in a LED display. However, it not going to convert it all on its own. All it's doing is saying that whenever you see an auto switcher, it will power the line and there will be power going to it. Whenever you see a inverter, it will invert that line, turn off the power to pretty much anything that's going forward wherever you see anything that's going forward. And that gives us the ability to control a little bit how 
the power goes through each line. And I believe, if I remember Cena's explanation of this, he called this a, a muck and demuxer. And for the average person, they won't know what a mux demux is, so that's why I'm calling it a sequencer because it's just a little easier to explain when you describe this as a sequencer because it's sequencing the number to be the number that you wish it to be on the output when depending on the input that you get. Okay, for a proper LED display, you wanna go zero to nine and then reset to zero again. So we're currently at number nine. This is our, this will be our last one on our LED display. And what happens is because we have four input bits here, we end up with the number 10 and we have no way to remove the number 10. I didn't find a way to make this a seven and then just have two extra bits making eight and nine. It didn't work very well when I did that. And so I ended up doing this with number 10. So here we are in number 10. What we need to do is we need to shut off number 10. And so that is what this, that is what these two guys here at the very top are for. Let's look at our model for a second and just start to see what's happening here. So you're gonna see that number 10 up there which is the one way up there at the top, have the line that's going all the way back over here because they're just ridiculously, I couldn't get them all to work. And that's going to the one that's going on top here. And if you notice that is shutting off a line here, which happens to be the second one, which is the one that's setting up number 10. And so that's gonna be the same setup that we're gonna do here. It's just gonna be a lot easier, in my opinion, to do over here than it was to do over there. All we're doing is going to get a wire. We're gonna take a wire from here. Instead of continuing the wire forward, we're gonna go with the wire up and we're gonna make room for the 11 over there. We're just gonna run the wire this way. And what's gonna happen is in order to shut this off, we're gonna to need to do a setup here where we have an auto switcher that's gonna help determine when that is on and when that is off. So what we're going to do is we're gonna set this up to where we have the input of the auto switcher, the modifier, so to speak, being number 10. We're having power coming from the main power line and then the output is going to go to that that second number two. So let me set, a, set this up properly and I'll show you what I'm looking at. And actually the main line's right here. So let me go ahead and get the power switches and we're gonna use the auto switcher here and that's gonna get connected to the, the modifier here and then we're going to run a main line he, from here to there and then the output of this guy because now it's turned on the output of this guy come on there it goes the output of this guy is essentially going to run down to where number two is and the easiest way to power off number two is just to run a line right here and connect it up to this guy right here because this will cause it to flip and when that flips, that then makes it 11. So we now roll into number 11 and we need to turn number 11 and number 12 off. I tried to do this where I did it one time and turn everything off, but what it did, it created a, a big mess, okay? And the mess just got, just, just got heavy, okay? And so I ended up having to do it with two auto switches. So if you notice the second set of auto switches, one, the first one was already right here for this guy. What we're gonna do with the next two is we're just gonna hit the auto switch right in here for the next line and it'll automatically default and turn off the next line right after it. So we're gonna set up a second auto switch on the same line that we've got here, but instead it's gonna be the second number. So we're just gonna lower this one right in here and we're gonna put a line from here, the main line connecting there. We're gonna get the output that's coming out of number 11 up here. That's gonna come here, go up, go over. We're just trying to keep this as organized as possible. That's gonna cut across and go right into the modifier of the output of the auto switch. And then the output of the auto switch, it's just gonna roll over just like it did with the other one. But instead, we're now gonna be wanting to hit this guy. So we're just gonna go straight down to this guy here. Okay, so the LED light, honestly, is probably the hardest part of explaining this entire thing. Because the way it works, I got this set up for zero right now. The way this works is this line here is coming in, propagating, going up, getting a single, going into an inverter. The reason it's going into an inverter it's, you have to think intuitive about this. How do you want a zero to be represented of all the lights you're on? So you want a line to be turning the zero off and that's what this guy's doing currently. This is essentially made up of all of these, um, sorry, all these light boxes. And you can find light boxes by going to power industry and go over to technology, you'll find the light box. Just essentially set up light boxes with three on the bottom, three on the side, and just make sure it looks like a number eight. And so what's happening here, we're, we're gonna have to rearrange the line as we go, but for the sake of argument here, this is going here, 
This is plugging into this one. All three of these are hooked up together, so that's representing zero. All of these other light boxes are all connected together, but only in their own little box section. So just make sure all three light boxes are plugged in with each other. And then for the sake of the argument, we're just going to start with zero because it's the only way to see what we're doing here because we want to make sure we can achieve each and every one of these. We're going to take a line from here. We're going to run it. We're just going to plug it right in here. We're going to take that same line. We're going to run it and plug it in there. Take the same line, plug it in there. And just keep repeating until all of the lines are plugged in except for the bottom zero. Um, this does not get us anything else. This just gets us started to understand the principle of how this works. So now we got a zero displayed. We can see a big giant bright zero that blinds us all to infinity here. And that looks like the zero that used to be there. So now what we're going to do is we're going to toggle this over to number one. Okay, we know number one has to look like a number one like that. So we're going to see as it propagates, it's going to turn this guy back on. But we actually need this guy to turn back off again. So this is where... If you notice this design here, this is where you have the design that has an inverter that goes right back to uh, one of these auto switchers and it's got to find a way to turn itself back off. And so little by little, you can sort of figure out where everything goes and what needs to go where. And so for this to actually turn into a one, we need to have several of these lines turn back off. Okay, so I pretty much laid out the auto switchers, the inverters, and pretty much everything that goes up on the board. So each one of these inverters essentially represents a number. So for example, this one here is representing zero. This one here is representing one, two, three, four, five, six. And then eventually it drops down for a separate number for seven, eight, and nine. And nine is essentially going to be a number that's just by itself empty. So this is how all of these here are going to get wired into these here. So each one of these, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, all the way up to 9 only, will wire itself into its own set of systems. And then for 10 and 11, it's already got a reset for those. And then all of these auto switchers, it's what's going to determine what which light stays on and which light stays off. All right, guys, to, to make this probably the easiest way to go, this is probably the easiest way to explain this right here. So... I ran a power line, this is the same power line coming from that original battery, it's just going across the entire thing. And the power line goes into this inverter, these four auto switchers, this inverter here, and the remaining inverters up above. So if you just kind of take a screenshot of this, I'll just kind of zoom out for you here. If you just take a screenshot of this, you could see where the power lines are supposed to connect. So that means you got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine auto switches that should not be connected to anything. Everything else should be connected to some sort of power in itself. And then from here, these are all going to connect into different pieces. So remember, each one of these zero to nine are going to connect one to zero to nine. So again, zero, one, two, three, I missed one here, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, so to speak. I, I miscounted, obviously. But um, I missed one because nine again is going to be an empty one. So this guy should be number eight. That guy should be number seven, six, five, four, three, two, one, zero. That sounds a little better. Okay, so we're going to work off of this. We're going to start connecting dots from these things that I'm going to explain as, as best as I can go. I know this is getting to be a very long video, but it's the only way to make this work. Okay, guys, this is where it gets start to get a little messy, okay? We're, we're going to, and we're expanding as we go, okay? I'm going to explain this as I go, little by little. So zero, the line for zero, follow the button there. That line is coming out, it's coming up, and it's going right in and plugging into the very first inverter that you see there. Number one is coming out, it's going up past zero, going right above to the, the top inverter that you see up on top there. Number two, which is powered currently... Number two is coming up, out, and it's crossing over the power line and plugging into the third inverter that you see right there next to the fourth one. The fourth, the so we have zero, one, two, three. Number three is coming up, and it's going up, and it's going right next to the inverter over here. Number four, on the other hand, number four is going down, and it's going to go to the lower inverter that's right over here. Number five, which is right after it, number five goes up, it goes over the first inverter, that top inverter, it goes down a little, and then it makes its way to the lower inverter up on the top. Number six, which is after number five right here, comes out, goes up, does the same thing that number five does, and it just happens to go over to the inverter right next to it. Number seven, which is right above number six, comes up, 
goes down a little ways, cuts across the middle right past the zero inverter and plugs into the inverter midway through. We can do some rearranging and moving of these things if we need to. I just did this so you can see it better, okay? So we are what we are where where we are here? Zero, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. We're going on to number eight now. Number eight going down as well. It's cutting out below both the seven and the zero inverter, and then it's going dropping down again, and it's going to an auto switcher. Keep that in mind, because eight has to have everything powered on, okay? So we needed to go to an auto switcher to get everything powered on. And then finally, number nine. Number nine really doesn't need to get hooked into anything. So number nine is just going to the very edge of the upper auto switcher. That's how you get all of these sequencers plugged into the right component of each one of these here. Next up, we have to plug everything to everything else. Fun. Okay, so I think the easiest way to go is I got a screen over here that tells me where everything is, so to speak. There is th at least four rings or four square rings where you can connect things. And then there's a bunch of lines to connect everything else, okay? So we're gonna do the square rings first. I think that'd be the easiest. You take this lot farthest auto switcher from the modifier of that auto switcher, you come over here and you connect that into the output of this particular inverter. From this output of the inverter, you're gonna go down all the way, all the way down at least to about here. You don't want it to connect to anything, okay? So do your best to try to avoid it connecting to anything if you can. And probably best if I just do this and then I run it again, the second line this way. And then I run it over here and I got to connect it to this particular auto switcher here. We want to make sure we reach this auto switcher right here. And so that's our first ring there. And then we have a line coming into this ring. So this is where I got to delete that. Actually, this is where I got the connection point. This is good. So it's coming in from this particular output of this auto switcher going down this way. And it's going to link up right pretty much smack into that line where I'd made that disconnect there. And there's our first square ring. You can kind of see the square shape showing up there. The next square wing, I'm going to do the far inside one because it's probably the easiest one to do because it's literally right where this guy is right now. We're going to go from the output of this auto switcher here. It's going to go over this way. It's going to come up, connect to this output of this inverter. And then from there, it's going to go up and it's going to connect to the lower auto switcher right here. There's our next square. And then now we got two more, a narrow one and a wide one. We're gonna to try to do the wide one first. The wide one's gonna take the output of this top auto switcher. It's gonna come around these two guys. We're gonna put it right here. And then we're gonna go all the way down and we're gonna connect it to this auto, this inverter. And then from the inverter, that's gonna to go to the modifier of this particular auto switcher right there. So there's a square there. And now we're gonna do the skinny square if we can get that in there. The skinny square is gonna take this line here from this auto switcher. It's gonna connect it to this output of this in inverter. Oh geez, I can't even get my line right. Oh my God, okay. Try it again. This auto switcher to this inverter. And then from this inverter, it's gonna go down and it's actually gonna go right out as an output for one of the lights, okay? So it's not even gonna go anywhere, really. So we're just gonna have this good line go right here. And then we're gonna have the line pop itself out all on its own. And then that is going to connect to the outer portion of one of the lights, okay? And we wanna make sure it goes to the right portion. So it's going to go out this way down here. And then we're gonna have it connect up to this line right here. And that's gonna light up this particular line right there. Okay, so the next goal now is to try to connect everything to everything else, if we can. So we're gonna take this auto, auto, uh, ugh, this inverter, we're gonna run this inverter right into the plug of this guy of the auto switcher. We're gonna take the modifier of this auto switcher, run it back and put it into this inverter here. We're gonna go down to this inverter down here. We're gonna look at this inverter. We're gonna run this line into the modifier of this particular auto switcher. This auto switcher right next to it is gonna get plugged right into the one right before it. And then the power for this guy, it's going to go, essentially go right into this guy. So these two guys are gonna be connected together. This guy's gonna get connected to that one. The line for this particular auto switcher right here, it's going to go all the way back to the main line for the first one. I think I did that already, what the heck? Hold on, let me check something. Okay, yeah, so I forgot to put a line break right here. Uh, you want to try to make sure you got a line break here because this line break is going to connect to the output of this auto switcher. This is the one little line I forgot of the square. I missed that one. 
I know, it gets kind of complicated as you go here. So then from here, this auto switcher here is going to connect right into the inverter that's sitting right there. These two guys are going to connect together. This line of the auto switcher is going to connect to the inverter that you're seeing right in front of it. And then these two guys are going to just connect to each other. Okay, I made one mistake, guys. This bottom one here, it's actually supposed to go to the bottom of this guy right here. So that's supposed to go there. Uh, the mistake I made here is essentially these guys are the one that's connecting together. There's actually three of these guys. I, I completely missed this one. So this guy is coming out straight out this way. Stopping here. It's connecting with this friend there and it's connecting with this friend there. There's three lines. I'm missing one fourth line. Where's the fourth line? The fourth line should be coming from this guy. There we go. And I'm missing this fourth line right there. So let's try to get that squeezed in somehow if we can get it to do it just right. That's why the two wasn't showing up like it was supposed to. There. That's better. Okay, now we got all four. All four lines are coming out here. And then all four lines are should be going to this guy right here. Okay, I realized I forgot some more. Oh my god, I forgot to connect this guy to here. And I forgot to connect this guy to there. I was wondering why two was not turning on like we're supposed to. This, this is going to power this. Which is going to power all of that. And that's going to give us a two. I'm like, what the heck, man? So this line here, right here, the one that connected all together in like this little, this little fashion here. This line here is coming out, going around, and plugging into this bar that right there. Meanwhile, the other one that comes out of the square, I had that right the first time, which is going on the outer edge. So now we got the two connected up. We got a two working. This should now be working completely as the line goes. And I know this is complicated. I know this is hard to see. Let me see if I can get this to a number that's easier to see, like a number seven. So we're going to go ahead and make sure this works. This should turn into a number three. And we should be seeing a three pop up on that side over there. Very good. We got a number three. And then we should be seeing a number four pop up right after that. I'm going to go back over to the outside over that side. I'm going to show you what's over there, okay? Once we get that four popping up, we got the four. Come on, hurry, hurry. We're almost there. Yes, we got a four. And see, we had to make sure we have this wired exactly the same as the other one because it's, or else it's not going to be readable. It's going to be backwards as we read it. We're going to see a five. Very good. Okay, this game gets annoying sometimes when you glitch out. So what shouldn't have happened here is this guy shouldn't have continuously powered that. This particular inverter got glitched out for some reason, so the 7 didn't show up like it was supposed to. Anyway, now we got 7. So now you can start to see how everything is wired back here. So the very top auto switcher goes to the very top bar. The very next auto switcher after that comes down this way and goes to the leftmost bar. And that should be powered on right now. The auto switcher after that goes to the right bar, upper bar. The middle auto switcher goes to the middle piece. The lower piece here, the lower one that doesn't have any auto switcher attached to it, goes over here to the left bar. And then the one right, the one where it connects all the wires together right here, that comes over and connects to the right bar. And then finally, the last auto switcher connects to the bottom bar. And that's how we got this wired up, at least. I'm just going to leave this, just, just kind of zoom out a little bit here. So you can kind of see where these wires go. And this should be a good angle here. So you can kind of see where the wires go. Take a snapshot, take a screenshot, whatever you need to do. And you can kind of see how that works there. I'm also going to roam this way. And you can kind of see how everything's hooked up here. Everything is now hooked up properly between these de de sequencer sequencers sequencers ugh, and all of the stuff in between and we got this all connected up and it looks pretty good let's make sure we get eight and nine and zero and i think we're good okay we're at nine we got all the way zero to nine and we're going to make sure the last one actually works and gets us converted back to nine all the way back to zero and it should be doing it without any additional trouble that last light should turn off in any second now come on there it goes almost there we're almost there I know, you just got to go through 10 and 11 and 12. There it goes. It finally got zero. We got ourselves zero. We're back to square one and our LED light system is working and it is complete. We're going to take a screenshot from like extra, extra far away. And uh, if you guys liked this episode, please do like, subscribe, leave me comments. Um, let me know what you think. Um, I apologize again if this is a really long video. My thing is showing that I'm like at 40, 50 minutes long. Oh my god, if that's how long this episode really turned out after I edited it, I am so sorry. I don't mean to make this long, but it's the only way to explain the system going from binary counters to sequencers to lead hookup. It's the only way! Once you get this at least once, it gets easier after that, right? All right? But yeah, we got this set up. It looks nice. I gotta thank extra special thanks to Cena for helping me immensely work out the kinks and issues here and to make this work like it should. 
This thing here, honestly, is probably a nightmare in itself. As long as you know what does what and what is it supposed to do, you can make this work really well. This can still be condensed a little bit more. For example, I don't need to stretch out the, the auto switches all the way over there. I could just move them in a little bit. But just for the sake of this tutorial, you got to see it much more like this. It's just easier to see the connection between the wires. If you don't do it, you're not going to see the connection. Anyhow, so again, like, subscribe, leave me comments. Let me know what you think. And don't forget to thank Cena for everything too, also, right? All right, guys, we'll see you next time. Bye. So one way to check your work without having to worry about the lights is just pay attention to the line that comes up from this auto switcher going up and over and into the inverter here. Same thing with the bottom one. So as you can see, the bottom one is off, so you know that's gonna be a zero. Look at the second one, bottom one is off, that's also gonna be a zero. And look at the third one that is off, that's also going to be a zero. So this is just a way to check your work.